so what's going on with GameStop's stock doesn't make sense to a lot of people. The struggling video game retailer's stock has been making stupefying moves this month, wild enough to raise concerns from professional investors on Wall Street to the hallways of regulators and the White House in Washington. The frenzy hit new heights Thursday when several trading platforms limited their customers from making certain trades with GameStop. It's all forcing hard questions about whether the stock market is in a dangerous bubble and whether a new generation of traders should be allowed to take full advantage of all the tools and free trades available on their phones, regardless of how reckless they may seem to outsiders. At the same time, champions of the 99% are cheering louder from the sidelines, saying the moves mean that hedge funds, Wall Street, and the 1% are finally getting their comeuppance. But before we start digging deeper into the topic, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you are interested in this type of content, in how to invest, the best stocks to buy, and much more, then subscribing to our channel will definitely help you out a lot. So if you want to get future stock ideas or the newest stock market news, just make sure to subscribe with notifications on. It would really mean the world to us. But let's talk about how we got where we are right now. First of all, what is happening with GameStop stock? It's been maniacal this month. After sitting around $18 three Fridays ago, it doubled in four days. It kept shooting higher, before nearly doubling on Tuesday and then more than doubling again on Wednesday to $347.51. On Thursday, it gave back a chunk of those gains and finished the day at $193.60, down 44%. But it's still up an amazing 928% through the first few weeks of 2021. And the company itself? It's still struggling. GameStop, based in Grapevine, Texas, sells video games at more than 5,000 stores, and the pandemic has been keeping customers away. More worrisome is the long-term shift by customers away from brick-and-mortar stores and toward buying games online. Enthusiasm has grown for GameStop's prospects after the company said earlier this month that a co-founder of Chewy, the online seller of pet supplies, was joining its board. Investors see Ryan Cohen helping GameStop's digital transformation, but analysts still expect GameStop to keep losing money in its next fiscal year. But why did it go up then? Well, let's take a look at Reddit, especially at the subreddit, Wall Street Bets. Their discussions are full of ideas for the next big trade to jump on, self-deprecation, and an appreciation of both winning and losing bets, as long as they're bold. They've recently been encouraging each other to keep buying GameStop and push it ever higher, or, to the moon. That alone pushed the stock up more than 1,000%. No. A big reason for that is how deeply hated GameStop's stock was by hedge funds and other professional investors on Wall Street. Many were betting on GameStop's stock to fall by, shorting, it. For those of you who don't know what shorting is, it's how investors can make money off a stock falling. In a short sale, they borrow a share of GameStop and then sell it. Later, if the stock price does as they expect, they can buy the stock at a lower price and keep the difference. GameStop is one of the most heavily shorted stocks on Wall Street. What happened to GameStop is called a short squeeze. So what's a short squeeze? It's what happened with GameStop's stock. When a stock is very heavily shorted, a rise in its price can force short sellers to get out of their bets. To do that, they have to buy the stock, which pushes the stock even higher and can create a feedback loop. As GameStop's short sellers have gotten squeezed this month, smaller and first-time investors have been egging each other on to keep the momentum going. Do these smaller investors believe in GameStop's business? There's been a flavor of that in the discussions. But lately, it's been more about inflicting pain on short sellers, hedge funds, and other big financial firms. Many people talk about it in terms of evening the ledger with the financial elite, who benefited from years of gains as other people fell further behind. Did anyone see this coming? Maybe not to this degree. But brokerages have been making it ever easier for novices to get into the market and trade. Commissions have dropped to zero, and people can trade on their phones. As each barrier to trading has fallen, consumer advocates cheered the broadening playing field. But they also warned it's possible to have too much of a good thing. Too easy trading could encourage people to make too many trades that are too risky for them. But in the end, there may be no way to prevent people from pushing a stock too high and potentially burning themselves. Instead, Spat said it may be better first to properly educate all these novice investors about the risks of bubbles and overzealous trading. A lot of people now feel like they're empowered, and they don't have to go through the traditional players of Wall Street to invest, Spat said. And in fairness, they didn't do that great going through the traditional players. Alright, with that being it for today's video, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video and want to support our mission of providing free financial information to everyone here on YouTube, please ensure you're subscribed and definitely consider leaving a like. As mentioned before, it really means the world to us. Thanks a lot and see you next time.